providing algebraic terms. If the question we're dealing with is pretty easy, we're just dividing a term by a number, then the rule can just be the coefficient divided by the number. So for a term divided by a constant, just a number, you can just do the coefficient divided by the constant. So 10x divided by 2, we're sharing 10 xylophones between two people. Everyone gets 10 divided by 2 is 5 xylophones, 5x. So you just do the coefficient but divided by the constant and keep the pronumerals. So another example, if I had 16ab divided by 4, I don't know what an ab is, maybe it's an allergic banana, but we've got 16 of them dividing by 4, that will be 4 allergic bananas for everyone. 16 divided by 4 is 4, and we keep our ab, because we just divide the numbers. But if it's a more complicated thing, like these questions down here, where it's a term divided by another term, then for starters, so let's just pop a line in there. So dividing two terms, or algebraic terms, always write it as a fraction. So even if these people, this question here was nasty enough to have been written as 10AB divided by 15BC, you'd say, nope, write it as a fraction, it will be much easier. You don't need to write that bit if you don't want to. Now, I'll tell you the easy way with the calculator. If you want to know the way that's much easier on paper, then watch the extension one and I'll explain how it works. Simplify the fraction part, the number fraction part, and I'd use the calculator if you're not sure on how. Simplify the number fraction. So here I've got 10 over 15, and remember, if you can't remember how to simplify it, use your fraction key. Oops, can we see that? 10 over 15, that's 2 over 3. So my answer will have a 2 over a 3. Then cancel out any letters that are on the top and bottom, but only one at a time. And we'll look at the powers in the middle. So B divided by B cancels out. And what I'm left with is A on the top and C on the bottom. And I've got 2A over 3C. So you simplify your number fraction and then cancel common pronumerals. So there's a couple more examples here, and that's when we've got powers of pronumerals as well. So we'll start, we'll simplify 18 over 8. We've got 9 over 4. So we know we're going to have a 9 on the top and a 4 on the bottom. Now, x squared over x. It's very tempting to cross out the x's, but x squared means x times x. So there's actually two x's up here, and you're only cancelling out one, because there's only one down here. So cancel that x and cancel the squared, because now we're down to one x up the top. And so we'll have x, y on top, and z on the bottom, because that's what's left over. This one I've thrown a negative in. Well, that's okay. A positive divided by a negative will be a negative answer, and now we can forget about it because we've checked it's going to be negative. 
3 over 21, simplify your fraction. 3 over 21, 1 over 7. So you can leave the ne negative out the front of the fraction, 1, or you could put it down the bottom if you prefer. 1 over 7, same thing here. There's an x squared and an x. So this would be x times x. We only get to get rid of one of the x's. And I'm left with x, y on the top and 7 on the bottom. Now because this got a little bit messy, when there's a 1, we don't need that there. So I'd rewrite this. This is negative x, y over 7. So remember your steps. If it's just dividing by a number, then just do the division with the numbers and keep your pro numerals in. But if you're dividing two algebraic terms, make sure they're a fraction, simplify the number fraction and put the answers in, then cancel any pro numerals that are on the top and the bottom.